One thing I like to talk about on this show and in almost every other aspect of my job is that people need to enjoy things for the sake of enjoyment. That things don't need to matter to be in your life or in a story. You can be, have, or do something that makes you happy and as long as that doesn't hurt anyone else, and by that I mean actually hurt them in a real way, not some bigot getting shitty I talked about having gay characters in a children's movie or game, then by all means. I've often wondered how to best convey that as its own lesson though because I overanalyze things and nitpick about dumb shit on technicalities all the time and have a wonderful time doing it. So in that regard, I tend to come off as a bit of a hypocrite. The problem is when I see something like the circle of life isn't a musical number, it's not an opinion. That's a fact. Much like how we in America call petroleum gasoline or gas for short, even though petroleum is a liquid and by its very fucking definition, it cannot be a gas. It gets turned into a gas, but you know, it makes fuck all sense, but it's still a fact we do that. Well, my dear teddy bears, I think I found my answer on how to best give this simple lesson. This is Alex Becker, whose channel is creatively named Alex Becker's Channel. Good god, man, at least I came up with a show title for mine. Anyway, this man's an idiot. He's wrong and has just forgotten what fun is. Now, to be fair and honest, I've only seen this one video from him. Even though he claims to be a successful businessman and has several startups and even has classes on how you can do all that as well. However, none of that matters in today's discussion because I'm focusing on this video's subject matter, not him as a person or his entire body of work. The video in question is titled Why I'll Never, in all caps for some reason, play video games again after learning this. In the simple fact I chose this one to make a video on is because, well, he's wrong about everything he says. First of all, let's go through his talking points beat by beat to get a fix on what he thinks he's saying and what he's actually saying and where the two seem to conflict. Also, spoilers, he uses no real research or anything like that. He literally just googled how dopamine works and stopped there. For context, I have taken three years of psychology courses and have learned about things like this for years. So I am coming with this with some knowledge on what I'm talking about. So let's go. Part 1. Being a joyless asshole At the start of the video, he says there is no hobby that can stop you from being successful as much as video games can. Mind you, he's a part-time streamer and there are literally hundreds of thousands of people in the world that get paid and are successful playing video games, be they reviewers, testers, or streamers. He then goes on to show us the money he made from one of those said startups. Following that, he body chains people for not being shredded like him has a great body. I don't know if you've seen me with my shirt off lately, but it's fantastic. And I'm extremely family friendly, so everybody likes me. But then there's you. Even though he looks like a generic dad who hasn't seen a gym since his wedding night. I can't tell if he's joking or being a pedantic fuck, but either way, still shitty. The next thing he brings up is that playing games affects you negatively to the point that you can't even dabble or play for like an hour a day or something. So, look, the reason why video games are going to stop you from being successful is not the games itself. Because for the longest time, I've thought to myself, hey, you know, I can just play video games on the weekend or I can play it one to two hours when I get done with work. No, that's not how it works. You can't play them at all. And by this, I mean playing video games at all. You can't even dabble because of how it affects your brain. How does he back this up? By talking about dopamine and the most baseline understanding of it. To the point, he uses the terms ones and zeros. He even says that if he uses actual science, he'll sound like an idiot. Now I can explain all the science behind it, but I will sound like an idiot. I could just stop there and go play Overwatch or work on another long ass video, but no, I'm gonna keep going because this shit's important. Whether you think so or not, it is. He next spends a good while explaining how dopamine works in a very simplistic manner that misses the point of how it actually works. To put it as simply as he does, dopamine is a one and pain is a zero. However, that utterly makes no fucking sense. See, dopamine is a chemical in the brain that we consider to be joy or elation or even pride in what we've done. Its main function is joy, but how you feel that joy is dependent on the context of the situation. For a quick example, I was playing Overwatch while writing this script and testing out the new hero, Echo, since I hadn't played the game since and she came out. We lost, hard, but I got play of the game. I felt amazing due to the dopamine intake to my brain for two reasons. One, it wasn't an ult play, which takes almost no skill because all you did was hit triangle, and two, I never get DPS play of the games. So this was almost like two years of me trying to get good. The problem with the assertion of pain is a zero is that your brain tries to avoid pain. The only reason we evolved to feel pain, why anything evolves to feel pain, is for survival. It means a bad thing is happening and we want to avoid it. The absence of pain and joy is a zero 
in this ass backwards analogy. The best way to phrase it is one is dopamine, zero is nothing, and a negative one is a pain. But then that wouldn't fit into his little math problem now, would it? He then goes on to tell us that video games give you so many ones so quickly that your brain wants to keep doing them above anything else, even being successful. Which also gives you dopamine in small doses because you do little things every day in a business setting that checks off a box in your to-do list, and that feels good. The problem with this part of the argument is that much like any other drug, dopamine stops being effective after so many continuous hits. For instance, I have played and beaten Kingdom Hearts 3 10 times since it launched. Six of those were on my own time, and four of them were for this big end of year project I have in the works. Now, I hadn't played the game since Remind came out, and I certainly hadn't played the base game in a hot second. I started gathering footage of my standard playthrough in mid-July, so the first time I played the game and watched the cutscenes, I was having a lot of fun. By the Easy Codes playthrough, which was the fourth one, I was so bored because everything had already happened to me four times. I'm not saying the game is bad for me not being super excited the fourth time around. It's my fault. I should have spaced things out more. However, I still got bits of joy here and there, like by getting higher and higher ranks in pro codes, or beating the org members with just the kingdom key, or the pro codes on. Stuff like that made it all seem new again, and when I invariably go back after a break, I'll still love it and enjoy it all over again, because that's how things work. Next, he asserts that someone playing World of Warcraft for 12 hours is bad, and it seems to not understand how humans work. First of all, people who play WoW are either A, teenagers in high school playing it on the weekends and that's their time, let them enjoy themselves, or B, people with a day job who pay rent because WoW, internet, and food are either monthly or daily payments. Which, by the way, they're spending 15 bucks of their hard-earned money on this game. If they want to play it for 5 minutes or 5 hours, let them. Who gives a shit? He's painting a picture of people that, if you spend more than, say, two hours a day gaming, then you're a basement-dwelling perv who needs to get a life. And that's rather strange considering the fact that he's also a streamer who has a day job, owns businesses, and of his own estimate makes millions of dollars doing so. Which, if that's the case, mate, why the fuck do you even care? You make so much money you could literally play games all day, every day, and never need to want for anything because of all the money you pull in. He pairs this with that same person not being able to read something that would enrich in their lives, which is kind kept conveniently vague, by the way, for longer than a few minutes. Here's the rub, though. People tend to find things outside of their wheelhouse boring, which is why we stick to what we know. Now, finding new interests and bettering yourself is a key aspect of life. I'm not denying that. However, reading and playing a game like WoW take very fucking different aspects of your brain to work. Playing a game, and as much as this imagined person has played, versus reading a book or learning a physical skill are vastly different because they don't do the same things. And also, people get bored easily if they don't give a shit. Learning how to do your taxes by yourself benefits your life, but it's also boring as fuck and is only needed once a year. So of course people are going to struggle with it unless they've done it enough times or have an accountant. That is quite literally the only reason TurboTax exists at all. He then goes on to talk about how if you play something and then put it down, your brain will keep thinking about it for hours later. This is because our brains focus on a problem in the background or even in the foreground if there's nothing going on to stimulate us, like when you're driving to work or taking a shower. Now this is true, I'll give him points here, but he's still wrong because that's what happens with any kind of thing ever. Be it a life problem, a math problem, a puzzle, a movie, or even a book. If you don't know how it ends or what the solution is, you are going to think about it until you get that answer. Regardless of the context, it's just how our brains work. It's called the completion principle. Following that, he brings up how it brings nothing to your life and it makes you a weirdo. Part 2. All work and no gain makes you a loser. This brings us to the main thrust of the argument in how he uses Kobe Bryant, who, by the way, fucking died in January in a plane crash. This video was uploaded at the end of June, by the way. So, you know, that's fucking not cool, man. He asserts that if Kobe went into the vetting process to be picked for the NBA, and he's thinking 70% on basketball and 30% on how to fuck someone on Mass Effect, then he'd do worse than the other players that are thinking about nothing but basketball. First of all, you're talking to gamers. We don't know shit about dick about sports, so this is completely lost on us. Second, that's not how humans work, man. If he's on the court, there are a million things running through his head, not just some piece of ass. And the other players aren't robots or NPCs in NBA 2K. They also have shit on their minds because people have lives outside their career, even if it's a sport. Which also, if you're condemning video games, but not live sports, What's the cutoff? Is it because it's an older profession that pays millions of dollars to its employees like you? Even though there are gaming tournaments that have million dollar prizes and there are people who are sponsored by companies and get paid like a live sports player would. Or is it that it doesn't support your argument and you didn't think about that?
That's what I thought. He then starts spouting how you get so much enjoyment out of a game, but nothing tangible. But as we've covered, what he means is money. He keeps talking about business, which he has to talk about what you know, but what if you don't want to make a business? What if you want to just make a living off working at a company and having more personal goals, like starting a family, or being a YouTuber, or being something that has higher ups to deal with the big headaches, and you still get a fulfilling career? I want those things. I don't want to start a business. And well, yes, I am my own boss here on YouTube land. I still don't want to have to think about how the site works or how to get paid. I just want to make videos and try to be the best I can be. I just want a decent following, maybe hit a mill one day, fingers crossed, and get a husband and a couple kids and about 5 million puppers. That's a pretty simple life if I do say so myself. Not everyone wants to be the CEO of like seven companies. Some of us just want to have a family. The rest of the video is just basically him just repeating the last point in different ways. That being you focus on it so much and you get nothing out of it. But you could put the same level of attention into a real thing and get something out of it. Boil it down, why spend your time doing something that has no external value? Because it's fun. It's relaxing. It's nice to enjoy things and enjoy them for the sake of enjoying them. This is something a lot of adult fans seem to forget about a thing they consume, whether it be a game, a movie, a show, a book, or even sex. We do these things for the enjoyment of them. There is no real reason at their core. And yes, I'm aware that sex has a secondary purpose to make children, but 9 times out of 10 we do it for fun. And if you're gay, it's 10 out of 10 times. But hey, that's just one of the perks. Reading has many benefits, same as watching a movie or TV. They can be purely entertainment or engaging, or they could educate you on a subject, such as textbooks or documentaries, or even being based on something that has some sprinkles of truth in it for good measure. Adults, especially people my age and above, have this nasty habit of making things that are inherently pointless, like video games or say a comedy show, and either decrying it as for babies or demanding it gets more serious and lore heavy so they can invest in it in a very worthwhile centric way, like filling out a wiki doc, which is not how entertainment works. If you find that a fun pastime, then by all means, but if you're insecure about liking games or shows because they're silly or fun, then pull the stick out of your ass because that's your problem. This ties back into the no real world equivalent argument because not everything has to be beneficial for your life. For instance, if you eat a chocolate lava cake and thought it was tasty, you get nothing out of it other than the inherent joy of eating it. Much like video games, the answer is not simply don't eat chocolate lava cake or rather replace that time with tofu since it has so many more benefits to your health and tastes like dog shit, you shouldn't stop something because you get nothing physical out of it. You made memories with people on stream, you had a fun time overall, probably laughed or made someone else laugh at that time. I consider that to be time well spent. Not only is his advice or line of thought or even just telling people this bad, it's not just stupid, it's also physically fucking dangerous. Especially now with everyone in quarantine and literally having no way to interact with the outside world. It's just homework, homework. And while people like me are using this time to turn our hobbies into jobs that we may one day turn a profit from, not everyone can afford to do so. Many people have been laid off due to the pandemic and still can't work even with the stores reopening. It's not a matter of data or extrinsic value, all that matters is the intrinsic value their form of entertainment has for their viewer, player, reader, sexual partner, it doesn't matter. Because that's what's going to stop them from killing themselves. And well, yes, I know he said watching TV or a movie and reading a book are better because... Well, honestly, I have no idea. He just kind of says they are because your brain engages with them and then stops when the book is shut or the screen is off, which is bullshit because the phrase, have you seen this game, movie, or show? And, oh my god, have you read this book? Are one of the most common things I've heard at a party in the last four months. Which I know that we aren't supposed to go partying, but it's more like a family gathering. Just, we're all clean, I promise you. We're not killing each other, I swear to god, we're all fine. Like, that's just not how people work. Telling people to stop it because it has no real world benefit is going to get them killed. In an age of mental health being talked about so heavily, and in so much more positive light, I'd have thought we'd all learn the difference between good and bad advice. But apparently not. We all aren't millionaires, Alex. We can't just focus on stuff that we know will make us more money, and even if it doesn't, fuck it, I can live this month if the deal busts. No, some of us need that adrenaline, that game of the day to have fun, to relieve stress, and overall just help us get through the fucking day. Telling people this is fucking disgusting, and I genuinely hope people don't swallow this bullshit so that this toxic lesson doesn't get taught to others and perpetuate that aging baby boomer logic they've apparently passed down to their own children. The last thing I want to touch on with this guy was something that he said about what got him to make his video, in that he was riding around in Breath of the Wild on that DLC motorcycle and realized there was nothing to do, and he had just spent 150 hours to end up with nothing. And when he turned off his switch, he felt nothing and had nothing to show for it. And to that I say, no. You had fun. You made those memories and you probably even laughed here and there. You had fun. 
and that's all that matters. At the end of the day, books or TV or even video games have a simple goal, to make you feel better for a while and have a good time. That's it. If you want something more from them, then you're missing the point. Saying games are inherently bad because they give you a chemical in the brain you can get from doing harder stuff and getting paid for that said stuff while the game gave you nothing is so myopic. It's not just missing the forest for the trees, it's missing the trees for the moss that grows on them. My name is Chris, and I hope you have some well-deserved fun today. If for nothing else, then just for the sake of fun itself.